Well, I sure hope everybody remembered to wish the Earth a happy birthday yesterday. In case you were unaware, she turned 6,028 on October 23rd of this year. Doesn't look a day over 4,000. This is, of course, according to no lesser authority than the Bible. Specifically, from the calculations of Archbishop James Usher of Armagh, a highly esteemed 17th century scholar who took it upon himself to calculate the age of the universe by counting backwards through all the pre-Christ generations in the Bible. And, of course, if the Bible's true, you should be able to more or less do exactly that. Might not be able to be exact, because it didn't always say exactly how old person X was when person Y was born, but it does have God creating the universe and then tells a linear story from that point forward to the birth of Jesus and beyond. And since the birth of Jesus is already the cornerstone of our dating system, it stands to reason that a determined scholar could retrodate the let there be light moment to within a couple of years. Of course, Usher went a bit beyond that and pinpointed a precise date. The first day of creation was October 23rd of 4004 BC, which was, of course, a Sunday. Having established that, he went on to precisely date all the other big happenings of the Bible. For example, Adam and Eve would have been kicked out of the Garden of Eden on Monday, November 10th. And Noah's Ark would have settled into Mount Ararat on May 5th of 1491 B.C. It would have been a Wednesday. Now, this is often presented as a great example of how silly the scholarship of the day was, but we shouldn't dismiss the academic rigor that Usher put into all these calculations, because sure, the Bible doesn't always give precise dates. But he wasn't just using the Bible. He also factored in a bunch of other histories and, and what was known from the nascent archaeology of the day. So, and, and this dude was a very serious and highly regarded scholar of his day, and he was, no doubt, a really smart dude. Definitely smarter than me. And look, if you start with the idea that the Bible is true, you set aside inerrant and just assume that it's based in reality, this undertaking is far from silly. Right? It's no more silly than our current efforts to date the solar system's formation. And honestly, the rigorous scholarship he put into this nonsensical conclusion is a good chunk of the reason academia was eventually able to see past the Bible as a historical document at all. See, for centuries after Usher's initial calculations, various scholars tweaked his numbers, adjusting the universe's age a decade this way, a century that way, etc. But the basic assumption that you could drill down to a definitive answer using the Bible went more or less unquestioned all the way up into the 1800s. That's when we started looking at shit like the Grand Canyon and realizing that we needed to add a bunch of zeros to the age of the planet. But because so many people had so thoroughly calculated the Earth's age using the Bible as their source, we knew that there was no way at all to reconcile that source with this reality. The Bible simply could not be true. The book that had served as the primary source for historical, theological, philosophical, moral, and scientific knowledge for the last 1,500 years and then some was summarily refuted by a fucking rock. And it was refuted not because people thought it was silly, but because people took it seriously. So at QED every year, they give out a Skeptic of the Year award called the Occam Award. And we've picked on Marsh quite a bit about this in the past, but it's a very cool thing. And the guy who won this year was a dude with the unlikely name of Dr. Flint Dibble. And what earned him the award was absolutely destroying some lost city of Atlantis jackass in a debate on the Joe Rogan show. And what made his debate performance so award worthy wasn't that he was able to scoff at the silliness of the belief real good. It was that he took the shit seriously. He took their conspiracy theories seriously and he asked, what would the actual results of this be if it were true? He took their argument seriously and asked, what would I find sufficient to refute this belief if it was a belief of my own? He took the opportunity seriously and he did mock debates. And in those mock debates, his opponent took his role seriously and tried to genuinely reflect what an intelligent person who believes in the lost city of Atlantis would say and do. There is no way to refute a belief that you refuse to take seriously. And look, th that's not to say that you have to take other people's beliefs seriously. I certainly don't. I make my whole damn living not taking other people's beliefs seriously. But I'm not trying to convince anybody to change their mind with this show, right? Ours is a show for people who already rejected all the God nonsense. But in my personal life, I've got the same situation you probably have, where a lot of my friends and family have harmful, irrational, and dangerous beliefs. And I know that if I want to change their minds, I have to be willing to take that belief seriously enough to understand how they came to them. So 
Congratulations to Dr. Dibble for the award. And thanks for reminding us that even the dumbest claims sometimes deserve an intelligent rebuttal.